By now, you're probably familiar with GitHub Copilot Chat. The thing that lets you ask questions about programming concepts, or it has make suggestions about your code base. But what if I told you that there was something that lets you use the same interface, a chat interface, but lets you suggest changes in natural language and has it go through and reason across multiple files in your code base to make these large changes to do refactorings or add additional functionality. And that's called GitHub Copilot Edits. So let's take a look at what that can do. So what I have running right now is an application that we like to call eShop Lite. And so what eShop Lite is, as you can imagine, is just a little web app that calls out to a front end, that calls out to a back end, that returns a bunch of products. So let's start doing some changes to this to make it a little bit better. I have some ideas for it, and I want to go through and make it better. And I'm going to use GitHub Copilot Edits to help me with that. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And to get GitHub Copilot Edits to come up, what I would do is, in your normal GitHub Copilot chat window, I would hit a edit button. There's the regular chat button, but I want the edit button and it has a pencil right next to it. All right, so once I get that going, so the first thing I want to do here is I want to take from my product screen, if you remember, I had each individual product row. And so the way I'm doing that right now is within my products.razor class, I have a row and I'm putting that in right away, right in line. But what happens if I would want to use that functionality somewhere else? I probably would want to do a custom Blazor component to do that. But I'm not really sure how to use components offhand. Luckily, though, I have Copilot with edits to help me out here. So all I would do is go through and ask it a question. And I would say, I want to refactor the, and I can use the hashtag um, symbol here to say products.razor. So give it which file I wanted to start with, just a little bit of help here. I want to refactor product.razor so that the product detail row is in a custom component. And I want to be able to pass in the product's image URL, its name, and description, and price. See, I'm just kind of describing in natural language what I want it to do. This way, I can use the new component wherever I want in the application. So I'll send that away. And what it's going to do here, it's going to create a plan for me. It's going to go through, look through my whole solution and say, all right, here's what I think that we're going to, we should be doing. We're going to create a new custom component, and we're going to call it product detail row to display the product's image, name, and price, exactly what I asked it to do. And then we're going to refactor the product razors page to use the product detail row to, uh, for each component in the list. Cool. So let's see what that looks like. And right here, it says, I can give you the product detail row and the product razor. And if I click on that, it brings me in to the changes that it made. So here, I'm in my product detail row, the new class, the new component that it made for me, brand new, just brought this in from nowhere, out of GitHub Copilot mind. And it has all the parameters, image URL, name, description, and price that I had asked for, and it made this new component for me. And if I click on, I can say I could accept it right now, or I could do an alt delete to reject it. But let's look at what's going on in products.razor. So go through, and I can see the um, diff, whereas before I was doing everything in line. But now what we have going on is that we're just using a product detail row component instead of saying uh, table row than each of my cells in there. So that's pretty cool. So I could, again, do a tab to accept it or alt delete to reject it. Or I can go on talking 
with GitHub Copilot edits to make some more changes. It has the whole context of what I want to do. And I'll just say, you know what? I want to call the product detail row component, let's say my super cool product detail row. So just renaming it, send that over, and it's going to go through and say, all right, we can do it. So it creates a new plan, gives me a concept of, all right, it's going to rename product detail row. It's going to update the product raise products.razor, and then I can, again, go through and click on it, and right here, what's nice is I can see that it actually said, you bet, my super cool products detail row. All right, that's, that's cool, but you know what, my super cool products detail row.razor, eh, that's probably not the best name. So what I can do, is if you look all right here, I can reset to iteration one over on the side. So I can actually say, you know what, this next, the ones we did, yeah, that's great, but let's reset it to iteration one. It asked me if I, hey, are you sure you really wanna do that? And now going through, I can see now that we're still called product detail row. And if I look at product razor, it's product detail row there, cool. So now what I can do, I could go through and individually accept changes or I can just do accept all. It's gone through, I'll save my changes. And there we go, very cool. So now instead of uh, doing out the table rows by himself, I'm just putting in a, a component. All right, so let's have Copilot chat edits do a little bit something with needs a little more context. And what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna jump in to the products project and it has an endpoint. And so what this looks like is that the endpoints here each have the lambdas implement the functionality right off the bat. So in each lambda, that's showing the functionality. And I, what I'd rather have is static functions, that way I can test things better. So decouple my functionality from the actual endpoint. Cool. Let's see how Copilot edits handles that. So I'm going to go back to my GitHub Copilot chat window and then making sure I hit the new Copilot edit button, which is the little plus with the pencil by it. If I hit new, I get a brand new edit with Copilot window. So now I can start act, asking your questions. And so this time I'm going to say, I want to refactor the code so that all of the endpoint functionality is in its own separate file and is not inside the lambda. Now, a couple things that are different right here. I am being really kind of vague on what it, what it is. It's like functionality inside of an endpoint, and it's not in a different lambda, and I didn't actually specify what file I wanted to have, have it work on. So cool. It's kind of, let's see what Copilot edits comes up for me here. Send it away. It's going to create the plan just like before, go through, and it's going to be very similar. And one thing I want you to notice as it comes back with the edits is the files that it went ahead and looked at. And that is product endpoints.cs and also programs.cs. So it took those files into account as it went ahead and came up with my plan. And so my plan here happens to be to create a new product handlers.cs file to have the product handler methods, move the Lambda expressions from product endpoints.cs to individual methods in the new file, and then update the product endpoints.cs. All right, so let's take a peek at what product handlers looks like. Cool. 
So they're static functions, which is what I wanted. And for get all products, that looks, that looks pretty correct. For get product ID, again, correct. Update product, stuff looks good to me. I'll trust it. I'm a very trusting person. And then over to product endpoints, we'll see what diffs it came up with here. And for the get, I can see it's um, taking the red, it's taking out the DB context, and now putting in the product handlers that get all products going in to it instead. Cool. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm just going to say, you know what? Accept all my changes or right away. And you can see now my, um, my product endpoints file has cleaned up quite a bit. Looks better. I've gotten rid of all the lambdas. I'm going to save that. Go over to the product handlers. Again, that looks like what we would expect handling all the database stuff. Save that. And now let's run our application and see what happens. I'll hit the play button and uh oh, I have some issues. So what happened? Let's go check it out. And down here it says the component attributes do not support complex content. All right, so this is back from our first set of edits when we made the product detail row change. And so what happened is that it's still sending in this whole whole image URL. Like so we're saying, you know, a like GitHub user content.com, Microsoft Docs, this whole thing. When really all I wanted it to do was send over at product image URL. So it's super duper smart, but you still want to check your work, essentially. So just sending over product image URL, we'll fix that up. Hit save. Cool, so we'll run it again after fixing the, the using statement, and we'll see that it starts up and that everything should work. So that's GitHub Copilot edits. It lets you go through and suggest changes to your code through across multiple files. And you can see the reasoning that GitHub Copilot goes through when it suggests the changes to you. It says, I'm going to first look at this file, then look at this file, and these are the reasons I'm making the changes. And you can go back and say, yes, I want these changes, or no, I don't want those changes, and go back for iteration steps.